What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to talk about the construction script. It's probably going to be a short video because it's a pretty simple concept, but I find that it comes in extremely handy. So let's jump right into it. The first thing to know is any class you create that inherits from actor will have a construction script. So if I open up this example actor that I created, you can see it inherits from actor. You'll notice at the top, next to our event graph tab, we have an entirely separate graph called construction script. Now, if for whatever reason you don't see this, like if I X out of this tab, you can open it back up by going over here to the My Blueprints panel and clicking on construction script, which is under functions. And that's because the construction script is technically a function. It's a special type of function. And real quick, I'll point out that just like any other function, you can give it local variables that can only be accessed from inside the construction script. It's not something I do often, but it's good to know. And what makes the construction script special and what it does differently than anything else is that it will run in editor. Specifically, it runs in editor anytime an object created from this class is changed in some way. I know that was a mouthful. So if that's confusing, let's just look at an example. I'm going to add a print string here. And in this, we're going to type the construction script is running. We're going to compile and save, and we're going to drag this into the world. Now, at some point, for whatever reason, print strings stopped working in the construction script for me. I read that it's a known bug, but we can still see this if we go to the output log. You'll notice that it ran a few times already, and if I do something like grab this and start moving it, you're going to see that every time its translation changes, the construction script runs. And that's true if I scale it. It's kind of hard to tell now that this is filled up with that. So what we'll do is we will clear the log. But if I scale it, it runs. Clear the log again. If I rotate it, we'll clear the log again. Also, if I change any variables in the details panel over here, it will run. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to add in a Boolean and I'll just call it toggle and I will make it instance editable so that it shows up in the details panel for the object in the world. And you'll see we have this toggle over here. Now, if I scroll down in the output log and I click on it, you're going to see that every time I change this variable, the construction script runs. And that is really where the magic comes in. You can put variables over here that relate to the configuration of an object and have it update in real time in the editor. And in a second, I'm going to show you an example of where I've done this. But real quick, I just want to stress this does not happen during runtime. OK, so if you have your object in the world, maybe animating and rotating and moving, the construction script is not going to be running for all that. It's not like a vent tick. There's no massive overhead or impact on memory. It only acts like this in the editor. That being said, the construction script will run under one scenario during runtime, and that's if you spawn your actor in during runtime. So if I were to do something like spawn actor from class and then spawn this in, the construction script will run when the object gets spawned in. So it's also an option for initializing blueprints. So now what I want to do is show you an example of where I've used this. So here is a project I was working on at one point that I never finished, but it was going to be like a simple billiards game. And here I have a billiards ball blueprint. Now, this gets a little more complicated than I really want to go in depth on, but I have a material instance on this that comes from a master material. And I, again, I know this is going to look complicated, but this is basically capable of changing the number and whether or not the ball is striped or solid based on that number. And it does all of this based on this integer variable here. So if I go into the blueprint for this billiard ball and we look at the construction script, it's actually pretty simple. All I'm doing is creating that material instance that I made storing it in a variable and then we're setting a parameter called ball number based on an integer variable that I have set to instance editable. So now if I go into the editor and I go over to this number variable and I change it, you're going to see that it updates right there in the editor. And that's obviously super useful for doing things like look dev and 
just having a look at your different materials. Maybe I want to place different billiards balls in the world manually and be able to change them on the fly. Another place where I've done something like this is having signs. So you may have a road sign asset, say speed limit signs, and you can use an enum, which will show up as a drop down over here. And anytime you change it, say maybe 20 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, you can change it to a stop sign, whatever else, it'll update in real time in the editor. That way, you don't have to manually go and change a bunch of materials on a bunch of different classes and meshes. Now, I kind of want to stress something. The construction script can kind of be misleading and draw newer users to use it in ways that aren't really all that great. So it's not really a replacement for inheritance. And if you don't understand what I'm saying at this point, that's okay. I have videos on inheritance and it's a concept in Unreal that eventually you have to learn and understand. And I've had people ask me if they can use this in place of inheritance. And the answer to that is really no, because it starts to get really messy and unmanageable. So I'm going to make, I'm going to try to give an example here. It's kind of an extreme case, but I'm going to add a static mesh into here. Okay. And something you can do is you can go set static mesh and then this new mesh here we can promote it to a variable and we'll call this mesh and we'll make it instance editable great and by default we'll just give it something like a sphere all right so we have this sphere here now and if i drag this in cool we have a sphere and I can go over here and I can change that mesh to whatever I want. Great. Now, you obviously wouldn't want to have a blueprint like this that's super duper general and just decide like, okay, like for every single thing in my game, we're just going to use this construction script. So if I need, you know, a couch and a door and a flower pot, I'm just going to drag this in and set the mesh over here like this. That's going to get extremely tedious and messy. You're not going to have those base classes with the correct mesh set here. So say you want to add 10 flower pots around different spots in your level. Every single time you're going to have to bring in a class, change it in the construction script. It's not what you want to do. In that case, you would want to have separate classes for your different objects. So yeah, overall, using construction scripts in a very general manner this way is not something I suggest. For changing the properties of a given object, it's great, but it's not an end-all be-all solution that overrides inheritance, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, that's really all there is to the construction script. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down below. You can also feel free to join my Discord. There's a few of us in there trying to all help each other out. I'll have a link in the description. Thank you all for watching, and best of luck in your projects.